Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the episode 6 about creating a multiplayer game with Notch yes. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this video, what I'm planning to cover is the chat and debugging on the server. Okay, so in order to make our chat, we will need to add new HTML elements to our web page. So right now we only have a canvas. So if you're not really familiar with HTML, you can take a look at my HTML tutorial series by clicking the annotation on the screen. So long story short, we will need two new HTML elements. We will need a container that will contain all our text. So every time we receive a new message, we add it to that um, container. And we'll also need a input box where the, the player will be able to write a message he wants, press enter and it's gonna be sent to the server. So in HTML, a container is a div. Now, if we want to be able to use it in our JavaScript, we need, we need to um, add an ID over here. And just to make it look a little bit better, I'm gonna add some styling to it. So a width of 100 px, uh, 500 px, a height of 100, and overflow y to scroll. So if there's too much text, there's going to be a scroll bar. There we go. And we could add like a default element inside it. So it could be something like hello. There we go. So this is our container. And whenever we will receive a new message, we will simply add more data to this container. Okay, so the next thing we need is the input. So input ID is chat input. The type will be equal to text. And we will also add a styling of 500 px. Now, one thing about HTML is that if you want the player to be able to press enter and by pressing enter, it calls a function. This is basically the behavior we want. We cannot simply have an input. We also need to add a form. I won't really explain why it's just how it is. So you put um, all the thing inside a, a form and then we will add what happens when you press enter inside the form so in our input then we call the function it's a bit weird but this is how it is so now that we have created our html elements we will need to um add it to our javascript so here i do document get element by id with each of the id so now chat text represent this over here now um there are two things we want to do we need to um create a new socket on Actually, I got it there. It's a new socket on. So whenever we will receive a, me a message from the server called add to chat, this function will be called and it's gonna insert um, this package. For example, data could be like, hello. So it's gonna add this to the inner HTML. So over here, so it's just gonna look something like this. This over there seems to be working. The next thing we need to do is to add a submit to our um, code and it will look something like that. So chat form on submit equal function. The first parameter, it's very important whenever you have a submit to add a prevent default. Because if you don't add that prevent default by pressing enter, it's gonna refresh the page. It's really not convenient, but this is how HTML is because of legacy stuff. Like back in the days, it was that way. So they have to keep it that way. Anyway, just remember that whenever there is an unsubmit, you add e prevent default. Now, what do we want to do when the player press enter? So it's simply gonna be a emit, um, something like that. So send message to server. So that's a new type of package. Right now, the server does not handle it. So we'll need to modify the server to handle that package. And when it will receive it, it's gonna add add to chat to all the clients, but let's work on that later. So um, chat input that value is the value that the player typed in our input over here. And after that, we want to reset it to nothing. Because when there's a text, press enter, the text should, should disappear. So it should look something like that. Finally, on the server, we need to handle this new type of package over here. So when the player logs in, we listen to any package that is that has the, the ID send message to server. And over here, it's the message. Actually, it's the message. Let's call it data. So what we want to do when we receive a data is to get the player name. Now, right now, we don't have a player name. Our player does not have a name. So what I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to send the ID of the player. 
And just to make it look a little bit better, I'm going to slice it. Something like this. It's not really important. It could be... It's going to be changed for the actual player name eventually. But now we will send a a part of the ID. So we know that it's the same player. Now that we have the player name, what we want to do is to loop through every socket in our list. And for each of the sockets, we want to emit emit add to chat and the data will be the player name semicolon and then the data which is the message if you remember correctly it looks something like this so just a little recap the player put stuff here then he press enter by pressing enter it's gonna call the submit of the form the form over here so it's gonna prevent the refresh of the page and it's gonna send a message to the server equal to the input value it's gonna reset the input value on the server um, we're gonna receive the package loop through each of the sockets emit a package saying add to chat and whenever the client receive a package add to chat it's gonna add it to the chat text in our HTML so it's gonna be added over here Okay, so now as usual, in order to test our application, we type node app.js, press enter, we log into the game, and over here we will see a little chat box with hello, we can enter text, press enter, gonna be sent to the server, and there we go. And this is the player name, so it's part of the socket ID. Now if I log in with another player over here and I type something, so hello world, for example, so as you can see, this is the new um, ID and on the other client, we will also see the message with the player name. So it's working as it should. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on debugging the server. So right now, if we want to spy a value on the server, a variable on the server, we cannot do it. So it's not really convenient for debugging. On the client, it's relatively easy. You press F12 to open the console, you click console, and over here you can spy anything you want. So I want to check the chat input value and there it is, I just have to type it. For the server, it does not work that way. We don't have a little console like that. So um, yeah, so the how we'll do it is that we will send a package to the server and we'll ask the server to evaluate it using the eval function. So the eval function, how it works is that you put um, any string and it's gonna evaluate it um, like it was like a, a function or something like that. So for example, eval chat value is kind of like just asking the browser to evaluate um, chat input value. So what I'm planning to do is that if the message the player sends to the server starts with a slash, then that means it's a comment to evaluate. So for example, I could put slash player list and that would mean hey server evaluate what player list is and print it so that will be very handy for debugging so over here in our submit we will do the test so if the chat input value the first one is a slash then we don't want it to be a send message to server it's going to be a evil evil server message and it's going to be the value minus the, the first character, there we go. So this removes the, the first character of the bunch. And if not, then it's exactly like before. Oops. So it will look something like this. So if it starts with a slash, it's an evil server function. If it does not start with a slash, it's gonna be a send message to server. Now on the server, what we will do is whenever we receive a package called evil server, um, what we are going to do is to call the function evol. So evol data. So this will evaluate whatever string you put inside it. And then we want to send back the result to the client. So how we will do it for now is just a socket emit evol answer with the result of the evaluation over here. And finally, on the client, whenever we receive a package which the, with the answer, we are going to print it. So we don't want to add it to them like as a, a text. 
is it's not really be gonna be convenient to select it and, and stuff like that. So we are simply gonna console log it, console log the data. So just a little recap, when we put a text in our input box, we press enter, it goes in our submit. If it starts with a slash, it, we call evaluate on server. It goes over here, we evaluate the data, then we emit the answer in eval answer. When the client receives an eval answer package, it just console log it. Now one very important thing to understand about eval is that it can evaluate absolutely anything. So with that, the player can cheat and it can also make the server crash, absolutely crash. So one thing it could send is let's say, I don't know, player list equal null. So it will delete the player list and the server will crash because it's it's buggy or stuff like that. It could also do something like delete database. Well, right now we don't have a database, but it could potentially delete the database. It could it could do anything it wants. So normally what you do is you add a extra variable called debug over here, a constant. And if debug is false and you return, so you don't do anything. And when you release um, your code on the real server, you set debug to false. Normally with in the remain variables, but I won't really cover that in this video. Just remember that if you put your code on the real server, the public server, you cannot have this accessible. Otherwise it's gonna ruin everything. Okay, so let's just test it. So we go over here, we refresh the server, we log into the game. We can still say random message like before, um, except that now if we do slash player dot list and we open our console, we will see all the um, players currently in the game. So those are values from the server and we can evaluate anything we want on the server. So I could do, for example, suck at that ID. So what is my ID? This is my ID. I could do, I don't know, bullet list. So this is the list of bullets. So there we go. So there are lots of them. There's probably a problem with the bullets not being deleted. So this um, could tell me. So even if, yeah, probably like to remove equal through, but they are still not removed. So it, it's, as you can see, it's very handy to figure out bugs that would otherwise not be possible to, to debug. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And in the next video, what I'm planning to add is um, being able to shoot bullets in the direction you want instead of being random. And I'm also planning to introduce a concept of logging in. So instead of having a random name, you will be able to choose your name and have a password and stuff like that. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.